Today we'll go step by step on how to create a sitemap with Google Earth Pro and Photoshop. Open Google Earth Pro and type in the search bar the address of your site and click on search. Google Earth will then automatically zoom into your site. In the Layers panel, turn off any items that are checked like the roads, photos, or 3D buildings. Then click the X below the address of your site to remove any other text maybe in the aerial like you see here. Start to zoom out and adjust the extent of the aerial you'd like to capture of your site. Close the sidebar by clicking on the Hide Sidebar button, and then you can click on the Historical Imagery button that will allow you to view an aerial of your site through past dates, and you can do this if you'd like to find a clearer image of your site. You can also click on the Show Sunlight button that will show you the sunlight across the landscape of your site within the past 24 hours. You can also experiment with this to obtain a clearer image of your site as well. After you have made your selections, go to the View menu and uncheck the toolbar and status bar. Go back to the view menu and select Reset and click on Tilt and Compass. This will reset the aerial and make sure that it's not a perspective image. Now let's save the aerial image. Go to the File menu, select Save and click on Save Image. Under Map Options, and check Title and Description, Legend and Compass. Then set the resolution to the highest setting and when you're done making your selections, click on Save Image. Make sure to save your image somewhere accessible that you can easily reference later. Now open Adobe Photoshop and open the image of the aerial we just took from Google Earth Pro. Double click on the background layer to unlock it and rename it. I'm renaming this layer to original and making a copy of it as well. And I'm renaming the second layer to copy. Go to the Adjustments button and click on Brightness and Contrast to create an adjustment layer. This is a non-destructive technique that will allow you to change the brightness and contrast of your image as needed without destroying the image. I am setting the brightness of my image to 20 and contrast to 15. Then I am making my project site the focal point of the overall site map by changing the color of the surrounding area of the site to black and white. I'm using the polygonal lasso tool to select the area that is my site and will remain in color. Afterwards, invert your selection to select the surrounding area. Click on the copy layer of the base map and copy the selection and paste it in place. Make a copy of the brightness and contrast adjustment layer as well and drag it over the layer copy we just made. 
At this point, I also masked both adjustment layers to their corresponding layer. Click on the adjustment button again and click on black and white to create a new adjustment layer that will then turn the surrounding area of the site into a black and white coloring. Let's get organized. Select all your layers and click on the folder button to group them together. I'm renaming this folder to base map and creating a new folder called water. Then I'm going back to the base map folder and selecting a copy of the layer with the base map image. I'm going to use a polygonal lasso tool to select all the water and copy it into a new layer. This process is the same as before when I selected the site. Now copy your selection and paste it in place within the water group we just created. Continue the rest of the process for the rest of the water surface. Afterwards, if you have multiple layers with the water imagery, merge them together and rename them. Making sure layers are named appropriately is essential to staying organized in Photoshop. Make a new layer and click on the paint bucket tool to add a fill. I'm selecting a bright blue color and clipping the fill to the water layer underneath it. Then change the layer blend mode to soft light and adjust its opacity to 75%. Create a new layer and add a darker blue fill with the paint bucket tool. Clip this layer again to the water layer underneath it. Then change the blending mode of this layer to soft light and adjust its opacity to 75%. I'm adding some extra entourage to the water with some boats, but this is completely optional. Make a new folder and name it green. This is where we will add all our layers that will make the greens of our aerial pop. Go back to the base map group and select the copy of the base map layer. Make sure to turn off the base layer above it. Then go to the select menu and click on color range. In the pop-up menu, make sure the select is set to sample colors and with the eyedropper tool, select the green within your aerial image. You will be able to see your selection in the preview screen. Click OK when you're done. When everything is selected, copy and paste it in place within the green folder. Then turn back on the layer that you have previously turned off. Make a copy of the green layer and then go ahead and make a new layer. You should have three layers in total. Select the paint bucket tool and add a fill with a green color. Clip this new layer to the layer underneath it.
select the two layers and merge them together. I'm also renaming this layer. Double click this layer to open the layer style panel and then click on the inner shadow option. I then change the opacity to 55%, angle to 96, distance to 23, and size to 62. Make sure your adjustments are in accordance with the shadows within your aerial image. If you're done making your selections, click OK. Change the blending mode of this layer to soft light and adjust the opacity to 85%. Duplicate this layer and change the blending mode to lighten and adjust the opacity to 50%. Make a new group and name it Roads. This is where we will add all of our road work. We will be adding a white fill to all the roads. Make a new layer and rename it white fill. Use a polygonal lasso tool to select all your roads, and once you close the selection, use a paint bucket tool to add a white fill to the new layer we just made. Continue this process until you have gone through all the roads. Make a copy of the roads group and rename it roads 2. Change the blending mode of this group to lighten and change the opacity to 60%. This gives you a different representation option for the roads. Make a new group and name it accordingly. We will now add our project to the sitemap. Here's mine already prepared to be placed onto the file. I'm copying and pasting it onto the sitemap and placing it within the site. Make any adjustments as needed. You can scale, transform, or add new elements into your project. At this point, we'll be adding the final touches to our sitemap. I've realized that I'd like to make the black and white background lighter. You don't have to do this, it is completely optional. I'm adjusting the brightness and contrast within the black and white layer. I'm adjusting the brightness to negative 20 and changing the contrast to 90. Then I'm making a new layer and clipping it to the layer underneath. I'm also adding a white fill to this layer and changing the blend mode of the layer to soft light and the opacity to 55%. Now I'm making another layer and clipping it again by leaving the blending mode to normal and changing the opacity to 30%.
Then I'm renaming any unnamed layers. Now let's add some row names. Add a new group and rename it row names. Now use the text tool to begin adding the street names to the streets within your map. Continue this process for the rest of the roads within your sitemap. Make a new group, this is where we will add the vignettes. Within this group, make two new layers. I'm naming one of the layers white vignette and the second one black vignette. Use a paint bucket tool to add a black fill to the black vignette layer and a white fill to the white vignette layer. Turn off both layers when you're done. Click on the elliptical mark E tool to use it to create a circle selection around the side of your project. You can also use the arrows of your keyboard to adjust the positioning of your selection. Go to the Select menu, select Modify, and click on Feather. Set the Feather radius to 200 pixels and click OK. Now turn back each of the vignette layers and press the Delete button to delete the center of the selection. Keep the blending mode of the black vignette in normal, but change its opacity to 50%. Now turn up the layer and then turn on the layer with the white vignette. Change the blending mode of the white vignette layer to lighten and change its opacity to 50%. If you'd like, you can adjust the order of the groups to have the road names above the vignettes. At this point, you can go ahead and make any other necessary adjustments. I'm cropping the image with the crop tool. I'm making a new group and this is where I'll add the final touches which will be the north arrow and scale. I have a scale here and a north arrow which I've already pre-measured to fit my aerial image. I'm copying and pasting it into my file. Then I'm adjusting its location to the bottom right hand corner of the image. Now using the text tool I'm adding the labels to a north arrow and scale. And this is the final result. You can see that you have a lot of options with the representation of your sitemap. You can turn on and off layers to see what you like best. You can also experiment with the black or white vignettes and the transparency of the roads. Let me know what you think of the final result in the comments below.